when you go to do your recording, if you record, if you try to record while you're Zooming, your camera and your microphone don't know what to connect with. So in Zoom, you need to go ahead and turn off your video camera and you need to mute yourself in Zoom so that you can do the activity in Screencastify assignment. And we're gonna give you one minute to do that. We're going, I'm gonna share my screen. We'll do a one minute countdown, but we want you to tell us who we're working with. So I'm gonna share my screen now to show you from the background what you will see once you create something as I just did. Can you see my screen that says submit unlimited? Yes? Awesome. So what I did for you is just create an assignment really quickly. This is something that um, your students can do. Your students do not have to have the Screencastify extension even installed on their, their device to respond to an assignment that you've created. So here's what it looks like from your perspective. Once you have indeed created an assignment, you will see here the titles of your assignments. And now I can see here, would you rather, I have 11 submissions. I can also click on those submissions as the teacher and all of them are now ordered for me in a folder in my Google Drive already. I didn't have to do anything new. I didn't have to create this folder. Google Drive speaks directly to your Screencastify. So I'm going to back up one here one, and show you, since I've created a couple of these, you can see the Would You Rather folder and then Get Help With Problem folder. And then for every one of these that I push out, I will have a separate folder with however I named it as the assignment created automatically for me. And every one of those submissions will tuck underneath that folder to help organize your Google Drive. So I'm going to go back to the Screencastify. Once you have your extension already installed on your device, then you can open up your assignment and assignment once you go into Submit Unlimited here. So this is your submit tab. You can create a new assignment here and it gives you two options. One option is to embed it within your Google Classroom. So if you use Google Classroom, super easy to embed there. But if you use anything else, Canvas, Microsoft Teams, if you're just sending an assignment to a Google group that you've created, or you want to send an assignment out via email and just have the students respond, you could click the classic submit link. What I did just then was I created the classic submit link and I just embedded it into this Google slide because I didn't have a classroom for you to join. But let's pretend that we wanted to create in Google Classroom. So once I create that, or once I click that link, then it's gonna ask me what type of video are you asking your students to submit to you? Do you want to have their screen and their webcam? Do you want just their webcam or do you want just a screen share? So if you want them to demonstrate for you, let's say you're a math teacher and you want them to demonstrate how they analyzed a problem that another student had tried to answer but had some mistakes and that you wanted them to talk through, here's what I think happened. Here's what I would help you try then you could have the student doing a screen recording only. But if you wanted them to be able to give some feedback, let's say for an essay that's in process, then you might wanna do the screen and the webcam. So I'm just gonna select a webcam recording only because I really only wanna see your faces. And then I'm going to title it um, however I want to title it. So I'm just gonna put here, analyze. And I'm going to put Treasure of Lemon Brown, because if you're an English teacher, you know Lemon Brown. All right. And then you could put whatever instructions you wanted there. And then you can choose any of your Google Classrooms that are already in existence. So I can scroll down. These are all the Google Classroom. Yes, don't 
you choose the sandbox, Chris? Don't be overwhelmed, but I'm going to pick the sandbox. Yes. And I'm going to assign it to all students. If you wanted to select a topic, you could do so and assign. Once it finishes thinking and doing that assignment, I'm gonna show you in Google Classroom what it actually looks like for the student. So here in Google Classroom, here is your assignment. It's already nested underneath that topic that I already selected my writing topic, the treasure of women brown. And here, when they click on the screencastify, the students will see the submission very similar to what you just saw. And it will give them the title. It will give them any of your instructions. And I didn't put instructions on here. I'm actually gonna cut in Chris, cause one of the reasons I wanted you to do that is I'm gonna actually take over the screen and show them what it looks like. I have that pulled up. So yeah. one of the reasons that we thought this would work better is if we did this piece is the whole idea of you having to log into Google Classroom and it was a little bit harder for you to see it. But we felt like if I was already a student, then you could kind of get the idea of watching um, Chris put that in. Let me just get my off of my slide. Notice I'm inside as a student in Chris's class. So you're gonna see now, here is my assignment that has popped up, analyze the treasure. So that way you can see what a student side looks like. I'm gonna click on Screencastify, looks very similar to the one that you just did with the assignment link. While we're waiting for that, well, there it is, nice. Okay, I actually have my video on, so I need to turn my video off and then I can actually come in as a record. You're gonna see that a couple of times we're gonna remind you that that today because students are gonna to come to you first thing and go, it's not working, it says it won't work. <laughs> yeah, turn their video off, right? They've got two programs. As a student, I get this countdown. I only get the option to do my webcam because that's what she chose. And if I could show you my screen so I could also maybe do a whiteboard screen, solve a problem for you, show you what's going on in my head while I'm talking. You probably don't want to know that, but <laughs> for me, just your students. All right, so that's what it looks like. And then kids would hit submit. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to click submit. And, and then I'm going to take back over the sharing screen because I want you to see it from the teacher side, what you will see. Hey, can you one second? I'm going to yes, say, yes, classroom. Sorry. I do want to show you, and then I'm going to let her take this back over. It's so fun when we do this. Um, it's like tug of war here with this. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. You get to see both sides. So now you can see as a student, I've got this option that tells me I have submitted it. I can unsubmit and go back in, but it looks very similar if you're a Google Classroom to the assignments that you're used to. I am stopping now and the teacher is taking control again. <laughs> so now I'm going to share from my perspective what it looks like from the teacher view in the classroom, I have already submitted the assignment. It's here in the classwork, Analyze Treasure of Lemon Brown. When I open it up, it looks just like every other assignment that I've assigned to my students, tells me the number turned in. You can click on it here. And remember, because this is a video, it's going to take a little bit of processing time. So once the student inputs or submits their video, it's going to take a little bit of time before you can actually watch it because it does have to process. But then you can actually do your grading, your quick grading here, just the same way you would with any other Google assignment. Okay, so um, that is one feature. I see that there was a question. Ellen, do you want to, was it, yeah, let me look at the, the question in our um, chat bar. Oh, it, it says I didn't, it didn't notice if it gave you the choice to save as a draft rather than assign. I didn't notice that either, but um, that's, we could test that and see in just a minute. We're going to let you guys do an activity and Chris uh -huh. and I will test that to see if it lets you do a draft. That's a good question. Ellen. That is a good question. So I'm going to go mm -hmm. now into a different screen and I'm going to go back to looking at our our actual Google Slides that we wanted you to, to look, take a look at. So we've talked about creating that, adding it to a classroom now. The same process exists if you just want the link to 
post the assignment, let's say that you have a Canvas course instead of a Google Classroom, and you see that it does not talk with Canvas the same way, you can grab that link when you create the assignment, embed the link in your classroom, in your Canvas course, very same way, and students will have that same accessibility. All right, so let's record it again. Right along. Is that okay? Say it again. I said, I'm going to move us right along. Is that okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So one of the things we wanted you to notice is that this new version of Submit is a website. It did not require you to have the extension. The extension is a great way to get to it. So let me show you what Chris was saying. If I click on, hopefully you can see all of my terrible tabs across the top. Sorry about that. But if I click on the extension, there are three lines in the left. And if I click those three lines, I can go to all of the Screencastify resources. So this is how I could get to that submit page. But that's just a page. You really don't even have to have the extension to do those assignments. So just kind of know that if you're having trouble getting that extension, that's a new feature for them. The other thing that they have that's newer is the edit. And we're gonna come back to edit, but edit works the exact same way. It's got a page so that you can go in and you have more features that you can work on. All right, so we're going to come back to this record. We felt like it was really important for you all to practice a couple of things that your students, as your, your students would experience as you give them assignments. So if you will go with me to slide eight, we've created another submit assignment. And in this submit assignment, we tried to make it look a little more like it might look in your classroom with content where you would give them a link and they might link off to another tab and they would have some instructions to read something. And in this assignment, we've asked you to make a recording and this recording will record your screen and your webcam. So again, just so you can experience it. Your instructions are in just a second, to click on that link that says the assignment, turn off your mic, turn off your webcam, excuse me, turn off your video for Zoom. You'll follow those instructions. And then when you're finished, you'll click your video back on and we'll know that you're finished. We're gonna give you about three minutes. This is an example submit lesson. Students can have their directions and you can link a website within the assignment. So it tells me to go to the website, review levels three through seven, choose a question stem from one of the levels to create a question that relates to my content, and now make a recording. So I would click on the website. I would scroll to levels three and review levels three through seven. So I have level three, apply. These are higher order levels. This website is about using Bloom's taxonomy and higher order thinking questions. So I'm gonna to go to level three. I have apply, analyze, synthesize, evaluate, and create. So I might ask the question, how would you improve this? Now what I would want to do is, this is the part that gets a little tricky for students when you have a linked site. They have to go back to the submit page to hit record. So now I would hit record and record my screen to submit my assignment. What was more challenging? And you can put it in the chat or you can unmute. What was a little more challenging about this activity? I tried to share, and this might be a question too. I tried to share just my Chrome tab so that it was on the one page that had the, the higher order thinking taxonomy, but it said that I couldn't do that. So I had to sort of reboot and share my entire screen. And if you mentioned this already, I apologize, but I'm guessing we can't just share a tab. We have to choose the whole screen. 
So it's probably a limitation for this submit section. When you're doing the record, you can choose tab, screen, and webcam. So that was good. That's something that, again, this is experiencing the program, especially from that student side. So you know what their maybe issues or questions they'll have. Thanks, Rebecca. What else? Anybody else notice something? I saw in the chat um, a couple of things. First of all, it said it didn't let me submit. So does anyone, and then it said, I never saw a submit. Does anyone want to speak to that? Did you figure it out? Because yes, that was one of the challenges. What was what was the fix, Alan? <laughs> um, the submit was on another page. It, yeah. When I went to record, I didn't even know if I was recording or not because I didn't see the finish of the 4321. And so I'm like, I, I don't know if I'm recording. So I went back to it. Okay, there's the submit button. So I guess I was recording. Exactly. And, you know, this is one of the examples they give in the training. So we really, because they'll say, you know, you can put a whiteboard link. Kids can go out to a whiteboard and show their work. But there are some challenges we wanted you to be prepared for, such as when you click that link, it goes to a new tab. And so in that tab, then the kids are finished but they need to come back to the assignment tab to hit submit. So good. I'm glad you got to experience that and kind of glad that it was, you know, you saw that firsthand that that wasn't intuitive. Okay. A couple of other questions um, okay. that were in there. Ellen, yes, I sent you the image of how you can schedule. If you create that assignment, you can schedule it to um, link into your Google Classroom whenever you're ready for it. And so it wouldn't have to show until then. And you can also, the students can have an option of re-recording to retry the, the recording again. But not necessarily, okay, I've submitted one, here's my second. If you wanted to do that, you would need to do a second assignment make it a second assignment in your Google Classroom. Like here's part one, here's part two. And you could do that. I mean, I could see a really good rationale for doing that, especially I'm thinking just as an English teacher, if I'm working through an analysis essay and I want the kids to think about just argument number one and I want them to process through, speak through their rationale for why they're arguing one thing. And then in another video, I want you to think about the next part, you know, here's my analysis of whatever. So you could do them as separate. And then that way the kid has technically thought through the argument for the entire essay, just in three different assignments. Which might speak to why you would differentiate um, using it as an assignment where that submit button is there as opposed to just a link. Because obviously if it's a link, like we've just sent you, you could go in that link and do multiple times. All right, we're going to move right along. We have three things we're going to look at today, and one was submit. So hopefully you've had some experience from the student side, and you can see that you can submit it um, with an assignment in Google Classroom or just as a link, and you get a feel for what that would look like um, as an assignment or as a process. The next thing we're going to look at is record. And record does use the extension. This is the one I think most of you are familiar with. And we just wanna take a minute because we're gonna take your recording and then move right on into editing. So let me go to the screen. Um, I'm gonna present so that you, well, actually I'm gonna leave it here. You're gonna be looking for this first image. And this first image, the way I get that is from my extension. I'm gonna click on my extension in the top right or not to the right of my URL address bar. And I want you to see your options. So Rebecca was talking earlier about wanting to be able to just share a browser tab or a desktop. So you can see that you can do that when you're recording or just a webcam. Your microphone, it could be a silent movie if you want, right? <laughs> and embed your webcam, webcam. So I usually have that off. That's usually not what I do, but for a lot of my elementary teachers when I worked with them, that was a real personal piece that they wanted on. It was necessary for them to have that. We want you just to go click on your extension, choose any of these options and record. Once you get this screen, so let me get all of this stuff and get this closed off. Once you get to the screen where you've stopped your recording and it pulls up, 
hey, here's your untitled recording. Pause for us. And we're all going to come back together and look at that. So we give you a minute and a half, maybe two, but if you can do it in a minute and a half, that would help us. Okay, I'm going to ask you to stop. If you don't know how to stop, I've gotten this question before. In the top of your browser where your extension is at, there's a little red button. Click that red button. I thought I'd let you try to figure it out. And then if you didn't, you're like, I don't know. It's just, it may keep going. <laughs> Click that red dot and then you'll get a stop option. And you should come to a screen that looks exactly like mine. It might have a different title, a little bit different picture, but some of the basic content. Oh, great question, Rebecca, in the chat box. Yes, but Pam's going to show you an easier way to find those. Rebecca asked, for those of you who can't find your chat right now, because that was me just one second ago, is there a folder generated in Google Drive when you create recordings? So Pam's going to talk about that in just a second. Perfect question, though. On the screen, there are a few things I'd like to point out. First of all, your title. <clears throat> I just noticed that Screencastify is getting a little smarter and it noticed that I was on a slide. So put the title of my slide right there for me. I didn't do that, but normally I would need to tell it what I've done. So this was my recording for, and I just give it a title. If I don't like it, I can always come over and delete it. Also, whenever I first stop my recording, it's going to start a playback. And if you don't want that playback at the bottom, it's going to start playing to you, right? So then you can pause it. And you've got to click to unmute. These are a few things that pop up on your screen. The most important things, though, are over to the right. And if you're going to share this link, so it's created a video and it has stored it in a Google Drive folder for you with a link you'll need to click on more options. So if you are doing two screens right now and you wanna pause off of looking at my screen and look at yours, you're welcome, but look for more options. Underneath, you'll want to make sure it says unlisted if you're sharing it with students. BCS, when it says sharing with BCS employees or, or it shares it with Buncombe County Schools, Anytime it says that, it's referring to bcsemail.org, which is just our teachers. So always be careful. You'll want to come over and choose unlisted, and unlisted will allow it, or you could choose one of the others that's not just for BCS email. But I'm going to choose this one, and then I can copy this link, and then I can share this recording as a link in any of my learning management systems or Google Slides, however I want to do that. There are a few more options. We're not going to get in these, into these today, but I want to show you where they are. Um, there are resource slides that you'll see at the end. We always love to give you more when you walk away, so you can kind of take these slides and keep looking at some resources, but it'll talk to you about some programs that will connect. So I have clicked my more options, and I've connected Edpuzzle, Wakelet, so there are things where if you're already in a puzzle, then you can upload one of these recordings or vice versa. I'm here inside my recording. I can now upload it to Edpuzzle and create some questions. I can also download this as an MP4. So when I hit the download, I might need to scroll down, but an MP4 is that generic uh, video file that's going to let me share with other programs as well. So I want to show you where those are at. And then finally, where are your videos? A lot of people like to go to the drive option. Chris and I were talking about that earlier, but I like to stay within Screencastify. So when I want to see all my recordings, I like to click the three lines to the left and I choose my recordings. Then what that does is it allows me to see the recordings that I've done. I can quickly delete them. Or if I click on one, then I can go into and edit it or get other options. So I think that answered that question. Does that answer that, Rebecca, about where are my recordings? Yeah, there, there's options basically, but I was curious if it was creating that in the background on Google Drive. So um, I know like Pear Deck does that. So I was curious if that was happening with, with this too. So. It is. And I wanted to tell you at the top right, if you did click on Google Drive, you also have the option in this top right where I've got those dots. I can go straight to and open it in Google Drive. 
if I'm more comfortable looking at videos there. But again, I've had a lot of people say, I went into my drive, I've shared it correctly. I would really recommend you just stay in and screencastify using those drop downs to share them as unlisted or however you need to share them and really not worry about trying to right click and work on these share settings, but just know that they are there. You've got a folder that it created for you. And uh, yeah, a couple of ways that you can get into that. Were you going to say something, Chris? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'd like to add too. Um, when you are naming your recordings, it's going to be super important that you name them something you will recognize. Pam and I do a lot of how-to videos, and you could probably use it this way in your classroom as well, how to link um how to find this assignment on Newzella. Here's the steps you take, student. Or, oh, you're having problems doing blah, blah, blah. Let me give you a quick screencastify. And they're really quick videos that I can send right to a teacher or right to a student, and it will address their individual problem. The naming conventions that you set up for yourself will be super important. And so when I'm creating things specific to a, to a teacher, I'm starting to put their names at the very beginning and then what it is. But then if it's something that I'm creating for general use for anyone, then as Pam's done here, how to cross list, how to find a bookmark, how to blah, blah, blah. So just keep that in mind as you're naming them that you're going to have to come back to this and the potential is there for you to have literally hundreds of these because they can be short, fast, and sweet, you know, just answering one question. So what I'd like for you to do now is you'll click those three lines and make sure you should have at least one recording. Click on a recording. We're going to look at the last feature, which is your edit feature. And again, I can in the top, in the left three lines, I can get to the editor, but notice if I have a screencastify video already here, I can click open in editor. Your steps now are to find your video, open that video and open it in the editor. Okay, let me point out at the top, um, I know it's really small on my screen, but hopefully if you can look on your screen as well, it's a URL it says edit screencastify.com forward slash edit. It's just like the URL we had for submit. So the editor is not tied to the extension. In fact, if you were to just go to this, let's see if I can copy and paste that real quickly and show you, it's just going to be a blank editor. And I can upload any video in the bottom right with add media. Oh, I guess I need to do a new project, but I can, in the bottom right, I can upload any movie or video that I want and then start editing. So I could potentially then add video to this. So if I had multiple videos that I wanted to put together, I can title it. I can get things from my drive. So I could go to my drive to get new media or pictures, intro slides. So they've actually did a lot of work with this editor. I really like it. We were playing around earlier. I'm going to show you one or two things, but I want you to play. So if you'll look on my screen for just a second, I'm going to give you the quick, quick tour. And when you probably pop it open, it's going to give you a quick, here's what's happening tour. But I have a bottom video tray here, track that I can click on. When I select it, it turns yellow. And now I can use my tools. Chris's favorite tool is the blur tool. I'm gonna to quick over this, Chris, cause we're running a little bit behind, sorry. But I can come in and I can just put it over, which we've all done when we've got sensitive information about student emails or data, but we wanna share a screen. I can put that up and blur, and then I can go to the right and make that a really intense blur. I can create a new blur, I click done. It's on my video, it's blurred out where you can't read that and I can keep moving. I'm going to come back down and select the video. I can crop it so that maybe I caught like a bottom edge of my screen. It wasn't right. It'll cut that out. And I can add text and instructions. So what I would like for you to do right now, I'm going to give you a, just a couple of minutes. Make sure you've got your editor open. I'm going to stop sharing my screen so it's not competing with your screen right now. I'm going to give you two minutes to play with that editor, and then we'll see if you've got some questions. Yes, there is a way to change the color of the text. I didn't see that initially, but I, so what I had to do when I had my text box open, I had to go to the three dots for settings of Chrome and I had to zoom 
down a little bit. Like I was at 100%. I had to take it down to like 75% before I could see those controls. And then in the right, you should see controls for your text. Bold colors. Okay, good. I see, so I see Robin shaking her head. That's what I had to do. All right, the cutting tool. Uh, good question. The cutting tool is actually just going to cut it right where your line is at. And then what you can do is trim the edges by pulling. So I'm gonna, uh, you're welcome to look at my screen. We're gonna take a, I'm gonna share my screen and show you that edit just to address that cutting tool just a little bit. Let's say I am this video that I have. I'm, there's a point in it. See how I'm clicking around and I'm moving it around on my screen. It's just a, it's a track and I can zoom in and out a little bit. The zooming in and out is just making it extend so that I, I mean, slowing down like the whole bottom piece where it's not so condensed. So I can, you know, kind of see it a little bit better. And I need to take out a huh or a sneeze or a something that I've done, right? And it's right here in the middle. So what I like to do is I cut it and it makes two separate videos. Then I can real, I can even take this video where it's yellow and I can zoom out just a little bit more. I can come to the front of that video and I, you know, I can pull this video over if I need to, and I can kind of trim it back and forth and kind of, you know, get that front piece out. Or that frustrates me sometimes. So what I really like to do in my other programs, I zoom way out. I put exactly where, and I actually look at the audio. You can see the, <laughs> or whatever it is. So I usually do that. I will put my cursor here. I will cut it again. And then I'll just take that little section of video out. Like it's gone. So I just don't want it. So again, the cutting tool is wherever your line is in your video tray or video track, it divides the video. So if I wanted to take a section out, I could divide it here. I could divide it here. And then I could take this little section out. All right, so very good questions. Um, anything else? Yes, you're welcome. Anything else that you wanna ask? Feel free to unmute and ask about this. A blur tool, if you needed to, I mean, when I did it, I didn't look at amount of time I was blurring or anything like that, And I, but I, I went back and forth on my line and I noticed it was only blurring at the moment that I had it on there. Um, so is there a way to extend time of the blur or shrink the time of the blur? Yes, absolutely. Pam's doing it right now. <laughs> yeah, if I select that blur, see how I can move it around and then I get little handles that I can grab. Send it all the way. And you can also make the blur um, more blurred or less blurred. She showed you that. But yes, just picking it up and moving it wherever you need it to go. And you can do more than one blur at a time. If you notice down here on the right, it says new blur. There's a little black button underneath your blur that says new blur. So you could blur where the student would put his or her name. You could also blur maybe where another student made a comment and you don't want their names to show, but you want other students to be able to use it as a model. And you want them to see that, hey, this student did um, some writing on their document. Another student gave them suggestions and then the, the author took their suggestions and did something with it, but you don't want the names to show, you could do multiple blurs on the same page. So looking at our time, we are close to the end and we're not gonna get to do our reflection activity, but I did want to encourage you and challenge you that as you're moving forward with video in the classroom, um, we're gonna link this document. It's actually linked there with this, but I'll link the real document. And it was made by an instructional coach from the Learning Focus site focusing on the higher levels of questioning and the way that we're using the activities in the classroom and using our digital tools. So we're applying them, we're having the kids actually be engaged and active and doing something. So even just think about this training, you were, you were trying to move around and you were actively trying to do the pieces. So again, this is here, you'll get that document. Think about how you can use questions because what's coming up, I know I showed you how it was connected let me just move forward a little bit. Resources are here for you, 24 ways that you can use this in the classroom. So we don't want you to take slides away. Bookmark these slides, 
keep them, go look at these links, uh, ditch that class or that textbook has some great stuff and a, a guide. If you're like, okay, that was a lot. I might need to go back and just review something here. This is a beginner's guide, but what's coming, um, you've got this smash app smash library that I showed you how to connect ed puzzle. But what's coming are questions where it's already built in. So that is something that's it's a beta version. We thought we were going to get to show you today, but it's just like Ed Puzzle. So as soon as you create your video and start to edit, you know that track that we were using to cut the video, you'll be able to stop it and ask a higher order thinking question, right? <laughs> ask your students to think about what they just heard and engage in that video. So this is a little video that uh, that actually shows you how that works. The other thing you can do after today is get certified, get your certifications. The flash is 10 minutes. It's awesome. <laughs> you don't get a certificate for that, but it'll get you going. And it's a really good like refresher what we did today. But the genius and the master screencaster, all of these are things where um, they give you ideas for activities and you practice doing those activities and you'll get a certification that you can turn in and get extra CEU credit. And Pam, I was just gonna say, I'm going to post this link and then you can you can say something, Chris. I'm going to post our my learning plan link in there because we had some people who had to zoom and they're out and need to leave. But let me post that and then Chris, go ahead. Um, on that previous screen, the Master the Screencaster Junior is actually a course that is created for your students to go through. So you do the teacher version, the Master the Screencaster, but you can also assign to your students, hey, do this because I want you to learn how to create your own videos to submit to me on assignments where it's allowed. Great. And again, the link is there. I know some people are texting that they had to go and I just want to make sure that that was in. Um, if you see somebody who was in the session that has these slides, it's on that very last slide, 19 for us. And I'll make sure I get that to them as well. But thank you all for joining us today. And I hope you enjoy using Screencastify in your classroom. Screencastify can be an excellent tool to promote higher order thinking activities and questioning in your classroom. Higher level thinking is simply taking our students to the next level, just pushing for more than simple recall or comprehension. Those questions are also important in your classroom, but you want to progress to higher order thinking questions and Screencastify is an excellent tool to ask your students to give you back an answer that they've got to analyze, infer, evaluate, or really think about. They can even create their own video as their response. Let's take a look at three different ways to get higher order thinking questions. First of all, Bloom's Taxonomy. Bloom's Taxonomy categorizes questions into remembering and understanding, applying and analyzing, and finally evaluating and creating. So you could start questions with remembering and understanding. Here's an example, how would you define? But you'd really like to progress your questions to analyzing and applying, or even understand, evaluating and creating, such as, what is the analysis of? What can you infer? Or, what could you invent? What facts can you gather? Another type of questioning that promotes high order thinking is Webb's depth of knowledge. Notice the levels are similar. Level one is recall. Level two is knowing a skill or a concept. Level three, strategic thinking. Level four, extended thinking. Examples of questioning with depth of knowledge could be level one, can you recall? or what is. Level two, could you explain how or how would you compare? But the higher levels of depth of knowledge questioning might look like, how would you describe the sequence of? Or what is your interpretation of this text? Or a DOK4 level of write a research paper, apply information from one text to another. Finally, let's look at Costa's level of questioning. Costa's levels are level one gathering, level two processing, and level three applying. Again, similar to Bloom's and the DOK. Notice this chart. 
gives us a list of verbs that you could use at different levels. So if we look at evaluate and create, we're looking at words or verbs such as recommend, refer, abstract, imagine. So these might be verbs that you could use to create higher order questions for your activities. Here's an example of CASA's level of questioning as applied to social studies. Level 1, point 2 or list. Level 2, can you see other relationships that will help you find this information? What occurs when? Or level 3, predict what will happen to blank as blank is changed. Or pretend you are. So you can see that the verbs help you with designing that question. Finally, here's a resource that it's a website on high order thinking questions for your next lesson. This resource is excellent for you to look at different ways of questioning that apply to your content level. And now it's time for you to take Screencastify and go create.